Hi, hello children. How are you all? Hope you all are doing, uh, following our instructions, right? Yes, so you are all are copying the notes, whatever we are sending you, isn't it? Yes, so prepare everything, all the lessons and do the self-assessment so that it will be easy for you to go on with the next lesson, right? Now, so we are going to see about your second, uh, next lesson, right? So your next lesson is about solids, liquids and gases, right? So in this lesson, we are going to see about arrangement of molecules, solids, liquids and gases in water change of state, physical and chemical changes. So now let us get into the topic. So what is this solids, liquids and gases? So solids, liquids and gases are the matter. So what is matter? So the any object or anything that occupies space and has mass. Mass means weight, okay. So anything that occupies space and has mass. So mass means here it refers to weight, okay. So which has some weight, which has some weight. So anything that occupies space and has weight is called matter, right. So matter can be in, as I said, solid liquids and gases. So matter is made up of tiny particles called molecules, M-O, L-E, C-U, L-E-S, molecules. So molecules are the tiny particles of solids, liquids and gases. So these molecules we cannot be seen with our naked eye. You cannot just see the molecules through your uh, eyes. Right? So, these are all about matter. So, how many matters are there? There are three states of matter. What are they? Solids, liquids and of course gases. Right? So, next we will see the I told you about molecules. Right? So, these molecules will not be same in all the states of matter. So, the molecules differ in each state of matter. So, we are going to see the arrangement of molecules in solids, liquids and gases. So, first we will see in solids. So, in solids the molecules are tightly packed. What is tightly packed? So, you can see, you can see the molecules in solids, it will be packed like this, okay. So, you can see it is tightly packed, very closely packed. So, there is no intermolecular space. What is intermolecular space? So, the base space between the molecules. So, whether there is any space between the molecules? No. So, there is no intermolecular space in solids and as there is no intermolecular space so the strong of uh, the force of attraction will be strong so they have a strong force of attraction so in solids molecules are tightly packed strong force of attraction no intermolecular space and as they are tightly packed we can say the definite shape so you can see what is this? This is a ball, right? So, this is an example of solid. So, you can tell the shape of the solid, isn't it? Yes. What is the shape of the solid? Yes, of course, it is sphere, right? So, you can say it is the shape of the solid. So, it has a definite shape. So, even a cube, when we say a cube, okay. So, a cube also has a definite shape and volume. So, what is volume? Size or weight. So, we can measure the weight of this ball, isn't it? Yes. So, we can say the exact weight of the 
ball. So we can say in solids there is no intermolecular space. They have strong force of attraction and the molecules are tightly packed. They have definite shape and also definite volume that is size or weight isn't it yes next we will see about liquids so in liquids molecules are not closely packed so they are loosely packed so you can see there will be some intermolecular space so you can see there is a gap in between the molecules isn't it yes so in liquids there is little intermolecular space and the force of attraction so they have less force of attraction and you can see there are molecules which are not tightly packed very loosely packed then when we tell about shape and volume they have a definite volume so they have a definite volume or size or weight so what is this thing you can see water right so water is an example of liquid so we can measure the weight of the i mean uh, the size of the water isn't it we can say 1 liter half liter 25 liters isn't it so we can measure the weight of the water so it has a definite size and when we talk about shape so whether the water has any shape no we cannot say water has a specific shape so in liquids they don't have a definite shape so they don't have a definite shape but they have a definite size some more examples of liquids can be uh, milk juice and ink so all these are examples of the liquids and when we talk about the uh, flowiness as they have a very less force of attraction so they can easily flow so we can pour the water from one container to another container isn't it so liquids flow so next we talk about gases so in gases molecules are very loosely packed here here the molecules are very loosely packed for example if i take a balloon so here so you can see there is more space between the molecules so it has a, a large intermolecular space so when compared with liquids it has even more space so the molecules are very loosely packed and they have a very large intermolecular space and they have a very less strong force force of attraction so you can see in gases molecules are very loosely packed molecules are very far and move freely so you can see it is very far in between the molecules and they move very freely so they have large intermolecular space so when we talk about the shape we cannot tell the definite shape of a gas so the examples of gas or air water vapor or steam so whether we can say any shape of the air no right so the air or the gases does not have any definite shape and they don't have the volume also we cannot say the exact uh, size of the air okay and they can flow easily so unlike uh, same uh, like uh, liquids gases also flow very easily so these are the states of matter that we saw right solid liquids 
gases. So, when we heat, when the uh, temperature increases, so the state of the matter will always be in the gaseous state. So, in a normal temperature, the state of the matter mostly will be in the liquid state. When we cool the matter or when we cool a uh, state of a matter, mostly it will be in the solid state. So, the only liquid uh, that is uh, that will be in a liquid form uh, in the normal temperature is mercury. So, this is an extra information that I am giving to you. So, mercury, what is this mercury? So, mercury is a substance that is liquid in nature in the normal temperature, right? Yes. So, next we will see about solids, liquids and gases in water. So, what happens the solids and liquids and gases in the water? So, mostly uh, the solids, some solids dissolve in water and some solids will not dissolve in water, okay. So, solids like sugar and salt sugar salt so if you take salt and sugar so when you add it in the water what happens it will soluble soluble means dissolve right so when you take one spoon of uh, salt or one spoon of uh, sugar and you mix in water what happens after some time the salt and the sugar dissolves in the water so, solids like sand, chalk and wood, they do not dissolve in water. So, they are insoluble. So, I-N-S-O-L-U-B-L-E. So, insoluble in water. Example, sand, chalk and wood. So, if you take sand, chalk and wood and you put it in water, so it will not dissolve. So, it is insoluble in water. So, sugar dissolves. Wax, wax whether dissolve in water, no, sand, no, jelly, no, salt, yes, okay. So, the solids dissolve in, some solids dissolve in water and some solids do not dissolve in water. So, next we will see about liquids that dissolve in water. So, the when, when the liquids that dissolve in water, they are called as miscible liquids. Miscible. So, liquids that dissolve. So, the liquids that dissolve in water are called miscible liquids. So, liquids that mix or dissolve with other liquids. So, it can be water or it can be any other liquids. So, they are called as miscible liquids. Example, milk, glycerin, ink, juice. So, when you take milk and add in water, it will dissolve. Glycerin, if you add in water, it will dissolve. Juice, it will dissolve. And also ink. So, when you add ink in water, ink will dissolve in the water. So, these examples are called as miscible liquids. Yes. So, next we will see about immiscible liquids. What are these immiscible liquids? So, immiscible liquids or the liquids that do not dissolve so some liquids dissolve in water so they are called as miscible liquids and some li liquids do not dissolve in water so they are called as immiscible liquids so they do not mix they do not mix with other liquids. So, they are called as immiscible liquids. 
So, examples are petrol, kerosene, oil. So, if you take petrol and add in water, the petrol will float, kerosene will float, oil will float. So, you can see here. So, the water and the oil separates, right? So, the oil will not dissolve in water. So, these liquids are called as immiscible liquids. So, examples of petrol, kerosene and oil. So, now you learnt the liquids that do not dissolve in water are called immiscible liquids. So, when we talk about gases, so there are some gases that dissolve in water. So, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, so these they dissolved in the water and you can see here. So, the plants take in the carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the water to prepare food and same like that animals take in oxygen which is dissolved in the water right to breathe in. Okay. So, even the soft drinks we can find uh, carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the soft drinks. So, this carbon dioxide which is dissolved make the soft drinks fizzy. So, you can see some bubbles comes out in your uh, um, soft drinks right your aerated beverages. So, that contains carbon dioxide which is dissolved in the particular water or particular liquids. Okay. Even sometimes you can see when the when you wa uh, boil water you can notify that the bubbles come up. So, it means that the air which is present in the water is changed into gaseous state. So, you, that you can see the um, air is changed into water vapor. So, children go through this lesson again and again and watch this video so that you will uh, come to know a very uh, clear information about this lesson, right. So, in this below description, we have attached the link called Google Drive. Click it so that you will get the details of this lesson, study material, question bank and self-assessment. So, copy that in your note and do the self-assessment. So, by doing the self-assessment, you are, you are going to improve your knowledge, right. So, thank you children, have a good day.